Hello, this is video number 29 on my multivariable calculus course. In this video, we're going to talk about scalar surface integrals. So let sigma be a surface parameterized by r of u, v, where u and v are in a region r uh, in the uv plane. Assume a thin metal surface located at sigma has density f of x, y, z. Then we want to evaluate the total mass. This surface integral evaluates the total mass of this surface. Okay, so what does this exactly tell us? At every point x, y, z, we have the density called f of x, y, z. If we want to find the total mass, what we need to do, we need to take the density, which in this case, the density is actually mass over area, not mass over volume, because I'm assuming that this surface has zero thickness or negligible thickness. Now, in order to evaluate mass, we'll have to take the density, which is f of x, y, z, multiply by area, and then take the sum. So this is what we're going to have to do. And then as we let the number of partitions of this surface to go to infinity, we get a surface integral of f of x, y, z, ds over sigma. Now, how do we evaluate this surface integral? We need to know what is ds. Well, if you look at the surface, at every point, we can look at the tangent to this point in two directions. In the direction when u is constant, and the direction in the direction that when v is constant. When u is constant, tangent vector would be r sub v, and when v is constant, tangent vector would be r sub u. Now we want to evaluate the area. Well, the area would be approximated by area of a parallelogram. Something that we have discussed before is that area of a parallelogram is magnitude of ru cross rv. So if you have a parallelogram based on two vectors, u and v, the area, so if I draw a diagram here, if I have two vectors, a and b, B, then this area is going to be the magnitude of cross product of A and B. Now, um, how do we evaluate ds? We simply replace ds by magnitude of ru cross rv and then dA. This dA is du dv or if you want to switch to polar in the uv plane, you'll have to uh, include an R. So let's do an example on this. Let's say you want to evaluate the surface integral of z squared ds where, z, where sigma is the surface given by x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. So the first thing we want to do is we want to parameterize the given sphere. So how do we parameterize this sphere? Well, we parameterize the sphere by uh, v and theta. So let's do that. So r of v and theta would be, radius is 2, so it would be 2 sine phi. 2 sine phi is r times cosine of theta, 2 sine phi times sine of theta, and then 2 cosine of phi. So this is going to be our r. Then we take the partial of r with respect to phi, we take partial of r with respect to theta. We take the cross product of these two. And finally, we take the magnitude of this. So that's the whole process. And then we, we put it inside the integral. So let's evaluate r phi. What is r phi? We'll have to take the um, derivative with respect to phi. So that would be 2 cosine of phi cosine of theta, 2 cosine of phi sine of theta and 2 sine of phi, although this has to be negated. R theta would be minus 2 sine phi uh, sine theta. Then we have 2 sine phi cosine theta. And finally, we have 0. So now we have to find the cross product of these two. Eliminate the first column. So eliminate this and take the determinant of the other one, we get 0 minus, minus again, so we get 4 sine squared phi cosine of theta. Eliminate the second row, we get 
again we have a minus sign here, a minus sign here, another minus sign for the determinant, and another minus sign for the j component. So we get four different minus signs, so that would become in fact a plus. So this becomes 4 sine squared of phi sine of theta. And finally, the last component is going to be um, 4 sine phi cosine phi cosine squared theta, and then plus 4 sine phi cosine phi sine squared of theta. Before I evaluate the magnitude of this, let's simplify this a little bit. So this is going to be 4 sine squared phi uh, cosine of theta. 4 sine squared of phi sine of theta. And if we factor 4 sine phi cosine phi, we get 1. So we get 4 sine of phi cosine of phi. Now, there's actually a way to remember this formula. So this is just 2 sine phi. If I factor a 2 sine phi from everything, I'm going to get 2 sine phi, 2 sine phi cosine of theta, 2 sine phi sine of theta, and then 2 uh, cosine of phi. So why did I do that? Well, this guy is just the x component. This y is the y component, and this y is just the z component. If we go back and look at this, this was x, this was y, and this is just z. So r phi cross r theta is rho, cos, rho sine phi times x, y, z. But regardless, if you take the magnitude of this, we would get 2 sine of phi, which is just a constant, so we can take that out. And by the way, the limits of uh, parameters are 0 to pi for phi and 0 to 2 pi for theta. So when we take the magnitude of this one, this is a scalar, so we can take it out of the magnitude. And then it would be magnitude of this, it would be magnitude of x, y, z. But x, y, z on, uh, is on the uh, sphere, so this would be just 2. So it would be 4 sine of phi. And notice that sine of phi is positive because phi is between 0 and pi. So this would be our magnitude. Now we are trying to find the surface integral of z squared ds. So this would be, surface integral would become, well, z is 2 cosine of phi. And then we have to square that. And then we have to multiply by ds. ds is 4 sine phi d phi d theta. Phi goes from 0 to pi, and theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Now looking at this, we notice that derivative of cosine is sine, which is right here. So we could do a u substitution. We could do u equals cosine of phi, and du equals minus sine of phi d phi. Although this is the type of problem that you should be able to do without u substitution as well. But if you don't see it immediately, this is how you would do it. So I would get 4 times 4, that's 16, and then I have u squared, and then this is negative du, and then d theta. Now if theta, if uh, phi is 0, cosine of uh, 0 is 1, and theta uh, phi uh, pi gives you negative 1 for cosine. So this would be the integral we need to evaluate, so 0 to 2 pi, negative 16. Integral of u squared is u cubed over 3 from 1 to negative 1 d theta. Now we're going to go ahead and evaluate this. Minus 16 over 3. Uh, plug in negative 1, we get negative 1. Plug in 1, we get 1. Subtract, and then we have to multiply that by theta from 0 to 2 pi. And this is u equals 1 to u equals negative 1. So we plug that in here, we get negative 64 pi over 3. And there's also another negative sign, so that becomes positive. So this would be the answer to the problem. Okay, let's look at one more example. Evaluate this surface integral where, where sigma is part of the plane that lies in the first octant. Okay. 
So we're going to first parameterize the surface. The surface is given as a plane, so it looks like this. All three intercepts are five. So this is the Z axis, Y axis, and X axis. And the way we can parameterize this would be by saying that R of X, Y equals X comma Y comma five minus X minus Y. And where do X and Y come from? X and Y come from the bottom right here. So these are the um, values of X where they come from. So when you look at this one, this is a horizontally simple region and a vertically simple region. So we need to know the limits of X and limits of Y. We could do either horizontally simple region or vertically simple region. So we usually do vertically simple region if it is both. So let me draw that in the XY plane. XY plane, the, uh, the projection would be like this. And we can look at the bottom, the top, and left and right. The top of this triangle is y equals 5 minus x. So these intersection points, intercepts are 5. So y equals 5 minus x. So y goes from the bottom of 0 to the top of 5 minus x, and x goes from 0 to 5. So these are the limits of r. Now we're going to go ahead and evaluate r sub x, r sub y, and then take the cross product. So r sub x becomes 1, 0, negative 1. r sub y becomes 0, 1, negative 1. We are taking the derivative of x, y, 5 minus x minus y with respect to x and y. Next, we're going to take the cross product of these two. Cross product of these two is going to be 1. If we eliminate the first column, we get 1. Eliminate the second column, we also get 1. Eliminate the third column, we also get 1. Then we take the magnitude of this, magnitude of Rx cross Ry is going to be root 3. Now we are evaluating the surface integral of, if we go back and look at what they gave us, 2x plus z ds. So what, are, what do we have to do? Well, we have to replace x, y, and z in terms of our parameters. The parameters are x, y, and z. So x and y do not change. We just replace them with the same thing. So we don't change them. But z has to be replaced with 5 minus x minus y. So we have to replace z by 5 minus x minus y. Then we'll have to multiply by the Jacobian or root 3. And then we could do dy dx because we looked at this as a vertically simple region. Now limits of y are the ones that we found before. 0 to 5 minus x and limits of x are 0 to 5. Then this is a very simple integration. So we're going to go ahead and evaluate the integral. Integral of 2x, I'm going to take out the root 3. I'm going to put it up front. Integral of 2x with respect to y would be 2xy plus, uh, and we can combine the 2x and negative x, so we get xy plus 5y minus y squared over 2 from y equals 0 to y equals 5 minus x. Okay, so when we plug in y equals 5 minus x, we are going to get, so let me just plug it in, we are going to get integral from 0 to 5, x times 5 minus x plus 5 times 5 minus x minus 5 minus x squared over 2. When we plug in 0, we're just going to get 0, so dx. So this is root 3 integral from 0 to 5, 5x minus x squared plus 25 minus 5x minus 1 half 25 minus 10x plus x squared dx. So let's simplify this a little bit further, and then we are going to integrate. This is, again, a very easy integral to evaluate. So we have 5x here minus 5x here. So those two, in fact, cancel. Um, so this term and this term cancel. We have negative x squared here minus x squared over 2 here. So we get negative 3 halves x squared 
we have 25 here minus 25 over 2 here so we get plus 25 over 2 here and finally we get plus 5x over there as the last term dx then we're going to integrate this so it would be root 3 times integral of negative 3x x squared would be negative x cubed over 2 plus 25 over 2 times x plus 5x squared over 2. And then we're going to have to evaluate this from 0 to 5. And this is a very easy calculation. So root 3, negative 125 over 2, plus 125 over 2, plus 125 over 2. So the answer would be 125 root 3 over 2. Okay, so just to remind you, what we did was we found the total mass as surface integral of density. So this was how we found the total mass. Now, what is density? Density is mass over area. So if we set the density to be 1, then mass and area are the same. In other words, the left-hand side is also going to be area if we set the density to be 1. So to evaluate the area of a surface, we just do surface integral of 1 ds. So here's an example. Find the area of a sphere of radius a. Okay, so here is now the solution. So first thing we need to do is to parameterize this sphere so parametrization would be essentially the same parametrization. And the radius is A. So in terms of phi and theta, we can parametrize it. And after we parametrize this, so this would be A sine phi cosine theta, A sine phi sine theta, and A cosine of phi. After we do the exact same calculation that we did for the other problem, we will get r phi cross r theta, and we take the magnitude of that. So what is this going to end up being? Let's look at the other problem and see what we got. For the other problem, when we did the magnitude, we got 4 sine phi. And that 4 is just rho squared. So this one is rho squared, and this is just the Jacobian when we switched from uh, dv to d rho d phi d theta. So this would end up being a squared sine phi. Okay, so the area then becomes surface integral of 1 ds, if I call that surface sigma. So let's say the surface is called sigma. And that means I'll have to integrate from 0 to pi for phi, from 0 to 2 pi for, again, limits of integration are the same limits of the param uh, parameters here. And a squared sine phi would be the integrand d phi d theta. So 0 to 2 pi. Integral of sine becomes negative cosine. And then we'll have to plug in 0 and pi d theta. When we plug in pi, we get a squared, when we plug in 0, we get negative a squared, but when we subtract, we get positive a squared. So this d theta. And when we integrate, we have to multiply 2a squared by 2 pi. So this would be 4 pi a squared, which matches the area of a sphere that we know. So to summarize, this is what we learned in this video. Surface integral of a scalar function evaluates the total mass of the surface when the integrand is the density function. And the way we evaluate that is by replacing, oh, and this is missing, uh, this is missing f. f of r of u comma v would have to be here. Uh, we replace ds by magnitude of r u cross r v dA. And to find the area of sigma, what we do is we integrate 1 ds. I will see you in the next video.